Hello. We weren't able to get the coach inside, so we're going to attempt to get the video done out here. We're going to go over the whole exterior of the coach. Once we're done with that, we're going to go inside. Anything we need to do during hookup at the campsite, I'm going to mention to you while we're going around. The first thing I wanted to point out is on both sides of this coach, we have a fuel fill door, which is nice because if you're towing a trailer, you can pull in on either side, whichever side's easier for you to fill this thing up. Uh, there is a key on the key ring for the door. Um, the next compartment we have, this is our exterior TV. So below the exterior TV, we have a stereo system out here. This does pull out and swing around towards you, uh, wherever you might be sitting. These come, all the compartment doors on this coach have a pin that you can put in here. So that way, if it's windy, it's not gonna move the door on you. Just be sure and pull it out before you try to close it. Another thing on this coach that I know I've mentioned to you before is all the compartment door gaps are pretty flush. So anytime before we leave, if you look down the sides of this thing, if we have a door open, I mean, you can clearly see uh, that we need to shut it. So we always just want to make sure that these are always shut all the way. So this is what they usually look like if they're hanging open. So we just want to make sure we get those shut. In here is your cover and your tire covers. This tray uh, slides out either side with just the flip of the handle. Once you pull it out, it'll lock into place. And to release it, you just slide the handle again, push it in, and it'll lock in to where it's at. In here, there's lights. There's a switch up by the entry door that you can turn on all the lights in the compartments if you need to. Um, other than that, I really don't think there's a whole lot in here. This is just mostly storage. In this one, it's just a pullout on half the side over here. So again, more storage. Uh, we have another quick release lever to pull it out. Once it's out, again, just push the lever back in and the tray will slide back in and lock into where it's at. These are your inverters up here. Um, those are used so that if you're staying the night in a Walmart parking lot, if you don't feel like running the generator, you can run the TVs, microwave, and small appliances off those. They do drain the batteries down quite a bit, um, but they are you are able to use them if you need them. Some people usually just you know, if you pull off and you're just gonna have lunch or something like that, that's what usually people use them for. Normally we don't run TVs and appliances all night with them, but if this was my coach, I would probably just be running the generator anyway, but you do have them if you needed them. So. And here's a good example of a compartment door not shutting all the way. So. In here is all the batteries. These are all your house batteries. These do not start the coach. These are to run your slide outs, leveling system, and any of the 12 volt accessories inside. There's not a really a whole lot for you to do in here. This is kind of a service area. We do have your battery disconnects in here. So this one is your auxiliary. Both of these are for these batteries. Uh, these just shut off different things in the coach. But when you come to pick this thing up after hours, if I'm not here, these two battery disconnects you're gonna need to flip on. So as you can see, when I flip them on, we hear, we hear things coming on. So uh, both of these right now are in the on position. So this one is facing on the lines in the switch and also the battery, if you notice, is level. So on this one, it's a little bit different battery disconnect but again, we have a notch on the side that lines up, and then we also see up here that the window is in the green area. So, and to shut them off, you just flip them back. And this is pretty important on this coach to shut these batteries off if we're not using it because things in the coach will drain the batteries. So, I'm gonna go ahead and turn them back on. That way when we go inside, it'll be ready to show.
next compartment we have back here is again just a little service area um, there's not really anything in here for you to do you can keep some stuff down in here we just want to make sure it's away from the wires back here again more service area we have fuel filters we have an air dryer we have a power gear pump for the leveling system and the slides up here these are our starting or cranking batteries the disconnect for these is actually in the back and I will show you that um, what's nice on this coach is it's got a more ride battery box so with just a flip of the lever you can pull the tray out um, probably not something you're going to be doing too much, but uh, just in case you ever had to jump start this thing or something, uh, you just lift this handle, pull the battery tray out, and hook your cables up. Back here, under the hood, this is all areas. Uh, this is just for the oil and the transmission fluid and stuff. Um, but other than that, back here, what I really wanted to show you is this is our battery disconnect. Again, this switch, when you come to pick the coach up, will be off. Right now it's in the off position. You can see the way the handle is pointing over towards off. So when we flip that on, now we're ready to start the coach. So if this is off, the coach will not start or anything until this battery switch is on. So the three battery switches I've gone over with you outside will all need to be turned on to use the coach. And they will be off when you pick it up if it's after hours. Back here, this is our 50 amp service port. And right here we have an in and out switch. What that does when we're at the campground, we just want to hit out and that'll spit your cord out and there's about 30 feet on here to be able to plug this into the pole. This is a 50 amp coach. You will want a 50 amp spot. You do have a 30 amp adapter if you need it to plug into a smaller spot at a campground. You may run into that, but if we plug into a 30 amp service, we can only run one air conditioner at a time on this coach. It's got three ACs and that's why it really needs 50 amp service. 50 amp service, how we'll know that the plug that you plug into will fit this as is without any adapter. So, and to run it in, you just hit the end button and that's it. Right here, we have a fresh water tank fill. That's something that you'll probably let us know if you want any water in it. And when you're at a campground, we're going to be hooking to city water. So you won't need any water in the tank. But if you did need water in the tank, it would just be for when you pull off anywhere on the way to your destination. So inside we have a water pump switch that this tank works off of. So, um, I mean, again, you, the only time we would need water in there is if you were planning on pulling off somewhere to use the bathroom or take a shower or something like that. Otherwise, that tank will be empty and you'll have water when you hook up at the campground. In here, uh, this will be an area that you'll need to get into when you're at a campground. So in here the first thing we have is we have our cap this cap is just a quarter turn and it pops off so what we'll need to do while we're in here to hook up your sewer is we'll just need to put our sewer hose on here and it clicks on and the other end of your sewer hose will just plug into the hole in the ground and that's about it over here we have your black valve that's toilet water only and I know we've talked about this, but we want to make sure that we use RV specific toilet paper and the chemical that we have inside. If we do those two things, we won't ever have a problem. We do want to let the black tank fill up, which you can monitor inside before we dump it. So you can leave your gray valve open. The gray valve is sink and shower water. And what's nice on this one is the gray valve has actually got a gray handle. 
So that one you can leave open when you're at the campground, but if you're gonna dump the black tank, you will need to run some sink or shower water in the gray tank. And what that is used for is we always dump the black tank first and then we follow it with the gray water. The gray water will, will rinse out the sewer hose. If you're not gone too long on your trip, you won't have to mess with this. When you get back, we can take it down and dump it for you. But if you ever do need to hook it up, again, we just quarter turn the cap off, hook the sewer hose up. The sewer hose will go through the floor in here. And once it goes through the floor, we can shut the compartment door. That sewer hose will go down into a hole. And you'll want to let the black tank fill up before we dump it. And you'll want to follow it with the gray water. So that's about it on the sewer system. And then, I mean, you have my phone number if anything ever comes up with that. Um, the next thing uh, we have in here, we don't need to mess with any of the drains or anything. That's all stuff that we take care of. A lot of that's for winterizing. Our city water inlet is right here. This is very important because this is where your water is gonna come in from the campground. Again, you can run your hose through the hole down here. We have a brand new fresh water hose in here for you. It's already got the regulator hooked up, so all you should have to do is run your hose through here to the city water uh, at the campground. So once your water is hooked up into here, we have pressure. So inside, we'll have pressure at all the faucets, sink, uh, washer dryer. I mean, it'll be all ready to use. Um, we also have a tank monitor out here. So right now it's showing the fresh tank empty the gray tank a quarter, black tank a quarter. So I think a lot of that in the tanks right now is from the winterize we did on it this year. So this is a water filter that we take care of. So once we de-winterize this coach, it'll have a new water filter in here for you. So all the water that goes through this system is ran through this canister and it's a filter and the water inside should be good enough to drink for you. This is a good filter setup. So other than that out here, there's not really a whole lot of anything for you to do. Everything else in here is just kind of service or it's all items that we kind of handle for you. In this compartment, we have the Aquahot system. This is all stuff that we take care of. This is just kind of where the unit is and where we would service it. Uh, it's a really nice system. It's, it's electric and diesel. So when we go inside, I'll show you how to get that turned on. Uh, this is our hot water, our furnace, and our engine preheat. So with this system, we have instantaneous hot water. And once this thing is warmed up, anytime you turn the furnace on, it'll warm this coach up pretty quick. So. I wouldn't keep a whole lot of extra stuff in here. If you do, make sure it kind of fits snug in here. So I, uh, I really don't know what you would put in here unless it was like leveling blocks or something like that. In here, we just have the box to the cover. The 50 to 30 adapter I talked about, in case you get to an older campground or something, our motorhome cord plugs in here to the 50 amp side. This end will plug into a 30 amp service. So with again, if we have to use this adapter, uh, we will only be able to run one air conditioner at a time. So other than that, anything else you wanna use in the coach will be fine. Again, we have another pull-out tray with just a quick release of the handle. Uh, it'll pull out, and when we're done, again, just pull the release handle, and it'll push back in and lock into place. In here, we have a tow bar set up. Uh, that I will probably pull out of here for you and store that because you really don't need it in here. We have a bag of extra sewer hoses. I believe you bought a new sewer hose from us also. And then there's just some extra water hoses in here in case you needed them. Other than that, this stuff could probably be pulled out and you could use this as storage.
This is our other diesel fuel fill on this side. Up here is just another service area. Um, really not a whole lot for you to do in here. One thing I am going to do, just based on Chad's last trip, um, I'm just going to open the generator door in case for whatever reason you ever needed to top it off with oil or coolant or anything. I'm going to go ahead and run it out and it's ran by this switch right here that says gin slide. I don't see you having to do anything with this generator out here. This was kind of just to show you what's going on. So this is our generator. We have our coolant fill here. Let's see if I can get this off. Yeah, so this is our coolant fill. We have another start-stop switch out here. The main reason I wanted to slide this generator out is if we ever overload it by accident, we do have a breaker on it right here. So right here, you can see that we have an on off so right now I have flipped the breaker off just to kind of show and then right there the breaker is on so it shows on up and then we also have an on here this is a 45 amp so if we ever are running the generator somewhere and just all of a sudden lose interior power uh, this is where we'll want to check first is this breaker I've never had this coach trip this breaker but I also haven't had a bunch of stuff plugged in or anything. So it's not very common. I just wanted to show it to you just in case it came up. We also have an hour meter out here that we kind of keep an eye on as far as generator hours go. And then we have a start and a stop, which is also controlled from inside. In here is our oil fill and our oil dipstick again i'm hoping that you don't have to be in here but just in case you needed to we have our oil fill our oil dipstick and this runs on 1540 rotella diesel oil i'm going to go ahead and run this back in out here again not really a whole lot of anything for you to do this is all just service stuff so uh, the next video will be inside